it's a beautiful day for softball here in Madison, Wisconsin. We got two games on tap for you on Big Ten Plus. Monticelli's ready. Shellmeyer is ready. And we're underway here from Goodman Diamond as Monticelli deals a strike to Shellmeyer. The count moves to 0 and 1. Skyler Shellmeyer, one for four on the day yesterday, was able to put every single ball in play. 343 average hitter. And not striking out will do that. Doesn't strike out a whole lot, does Shellmeyer. Only 10 of them on the year. The 0 1. Hard hit line drive, but it's going to go foul. So quickly, Monticelli up 0-2 here. As you mentioned, Shellmeyer with her hit yesterday. Extended her on base streak from 16 to 17 games. Yeah, only si seven games on the year for her where she hasn't recorded a base hit. And even in those games where she doesn't record a hit, she's still very productive. She scored five runs in those seven games. Yeah. And Coach Drohan talked about that. We talked about it yesterday, too. Shellmeyer, just a really productive hitter, no matter the numbers. Right there, she fouls it off, stays alive. We'll do the 0-2 again. Yeah, and just even if she isn't getting the base hits to fall, she's just such a tough out on there. It makes it really hard for the pitcher. It's exactly what you want from your leadoff hitter. And even when she, if she makes it on base, too, it doesn't make it any easier. 12 stolen bases for her on the year. Really a lot of fear for the defense and the pitcher when she's on base. The 0-2. Chopper over to the shortstop. Ellie Hubbard fires over to first in time for the first out. Great play there by Ellie Hubbard at short for today. Same position for her today as yesterday. So we can see Ellie Hubbard there at short. Same position for every Badger player, even from yesterday, besides Peyton Bannon and Molly Schlosser. Switching it up, Schlosser in left field today, Bannon in center. It's going to bring up Maeve Nelson next for the Wildcats. Nelson had her five-game hit streak snapped yesterday against the Badgers. So the first pitch is going to run a little up and in. Yeah, you look at the average for her, a bit lower than it has been in usual seasons, but still a very productive hitter, 390 on base percentage for her. So even though in a tough Northwestern lineup she doesn't stand out as much, still a very dangerous hitter. Has 19 walks on the year, came into the series 10th in the Big Ten in walks. So as you mentioned, although her average is sitting just a little above that Mendoza line, her on base percentage sitting near 400. Yeah, 202 average, as you can see there. A very traditional second hitter for Katie Doran and this offense here. Leads the team in sack hits. One of those more traditional second bit, or second hitters where if the first person reached you, you know, you want them to lay down a bunt. Big wave and a miss that time from Nelson. Monticelli and both the batters she's faced gotten ahead to two strikes. Yeah, getting out early for Monticelli is going to be the name of the game here. You don't want to allow a bunch of walks or hit by pitches like the Badgers did yesterday. That led to the damage. Even though it was only one run, it ended up being the deciding factor. Four free passes in the second inning from Maddie Schwartz gave the Wildcats their lone run of the game. Either team their lone run of the game. The one-two. Fastball left inside. Boy, Monticelli is throwing hard early in this game. Yeah, sending a message to those Northwestern pitchers. Badgers felt like they definitely could have won yesterday, and they definitely feel like they can win today, too. Monticelli, a hard pitcher to hit. Fourth in the Big Ten in hits allowed this year so far. Yeah, gets a lot of whiffs. As we mentioned, her strikeouts, tops on the team, 66. The 2-2. Two -two. Big swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Angelopoulos lays the tag, and there's two away here in the first. Yeah, and the hype's there immediately. Two batters into the game. Monticelli and her teammates screaming around the diamond there. Take a look at the pitch here. Goes high and inside, gets swing and miss from Nelson. Even though it's only the first inning, you could see the emotion a little bit from Peyton Monticelli there. This game is a huge one in terms of Big Ten standings. Northwestern sitting only a few games above the Badgers, currently atop the Big Ten. Going to bring up Jordan Rudd now. We highlighted her in our lineup, one of the stars for this Northwestern team. First pitch going to be up and in to Rudd. Looks like Maeve Nelson's still batting here. Oh, excuse me. Must have fouled off that last pitch. You're absolutely right. So Maeve Nelson's still batting. Must have been a surprise foul ball. Yeah, it's a surprise to the Badgers for sure. They were very hyped up. Looks like maybe Angelopoulos, you know, she would have held on to that last pitch 
would have gotten the out, but slips through her glove. Well, here's a payoff and another foul ball then. Already some confusion here at Goodman. Big crowd today at Goodman Diamond. Big crowd yesterday as well. Plenty of Northwestern fans here. Plenty of Wisconsin fans as well. Going to be plenty of crowd noise throughout the game. Maeve Nelson really taking her time out of the batter's box here. Monticelli's been set on the mound for a good amount now. Once again, the payoff. Swing and a miss, and there's strike three. Yeah, didn't get it last time, but got it that time. No doubt about that one, hopefully. Angelopoulos able to hold on. Went high and inside for the quote-unquote strikeout last time. This one goes high and outside. Gets the swing and the miss. The Northwestern lineup goes to its three-hitter. So now this is Jordan Rudd. Rudd batting 317 on the season. 14 extra base hits. First pitch is going to miss upstairs. Count goes to 1-0. One of five Northwestern hitters in this lineup that has an OPS above 900. Doesn't make you question why they're so good when you hear numbers like that. Swinging a foul ball there. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Com went down one and two here, facing Cammy Henry. The pitch. Out one left outside. Count evens up at two and two. It's not often you see Kayla Comlin even in two strike counts, but when she does, she literally does a great job of staying alive at the plate. Only seven strikeouts on the year. Yeah, 87 at bats, 34 games played, seven strikeouts. She's going to ground one right back to Cammie Henry. On to second for one. On to first. Double play. What a double play from the Wildcats there to eliminate the two best hitters in this Badgers order as now there's two away. Up to the plate for Wisconsin. Cuffle yesterday went one for three with a strikeout. First pitch is going to miss upstairs. A lot of power for Cuffle in this lineup. Four home runs, as many as Katie Keller. 19 RBIs, hitting in that three spot. Also has three doubles on the season as well. Count evens up at one and one here. Cuffle carrying a seven game hitting streak into today. Over her last six games, Brooke Cuffle's batting 444 with four runs and four RBIs. Yeah, one of four Badgers yesterday to record a hit. Two one, off speed pitch right down the middle. Make it two and two now. Northwestern in their road whites now, after their purples yesterday. Badgers wearing their home reds. Beautiful day here in Madison. Both pitchers trying to get through the side early. Swing and a miss for strike three. And after allowing a leadoff walk, Cammy Henry gets the double play and a strikeout to end the inning. Anna Katie going to lead things off for the Wildcats. First pitch in, touches the outside corner for Monticelli. Yeah, Katie tremendous at the hot corner. As we saw in our recap earlier in this game, she turned a pivotal double play in bottom of the sixth inning when the Badgers had the bases loaded. That pitch misses upstairs. Count evens up at one and one. Both third basemen yesterday, too, Hannah Cady and Skylar Sardashny, really impressed in the field. Yeah, well, two players with plenty of experience. You don't see them playing positions outside of third very much, so just able to make the hard plays look routine for them. Katie, after getting hit by a pitch yesterday, extended her on base streak to seven games. 441 OBP for the season. 2 1 in there for a strike. Count evens up at 2 and 2. Umpires for today's game. Behind the plate is going to be Susan Eads. At third, Steve Gould. And at first, Stacey Poulsen. 
Monticelli looking for her second strikeout of the game. The 2-2. Just misses the outside corner as the count runs full. Yeah, that's part of that excellent Hannah Katie plate discipline there. You can see her approach. She stands pretty close to the plate. Ten hit by pitches for her on the season. Definitely tries to implement that into her strategy. That's why her on-base percentage is so high. The payoff. That one way outside for ball four. First base runner of the game for Northwestern. It's a leadoff walk to Katie. Yeah, Monticelli able to go one, two, three in the first inning, but gets a walk here. Very similar to how the game started for the Badgers yeah. yesterday, going one, two, three, and then allowing two sh or a hit by pitch and then two straight, three straight walks after that, I should say. Getting a little deja vu here in the top of the second. We'll see if Monticelli can change what Schwartz did yesterday. Now the first pitch into Cochran. Going to miss outside. Well, it certainly doesn't get any easier for Monticelli. Nikki Cochran, 354 on the se season, three home runs. Falling up a season in which she was first team all Big Ten last year, batted 330, now 347. 1-0. That one hits Cochran, I believe. So, Jake, you might have called it here, but a little bit of deja vu, two free passes to start the top of the second. Yeah, just not what you want to do if you're Monticelli, especially so early in the count. You want to be able to work these batters and earn some outs, but, you know, if you don't get your rhythm down quickly, then it could lead to some damage here for the batters. So it's going to be Angela Zedek up next with two on and nobody out here in the top of the second. Zedek had her nine-game hitting streak snapped yesterday, looking to start a new one today. Outfield and infield both playing straight up with a runner in scoring position. First pitch fouled off. Yeah, only two plate of appearances for her yesterday. It was Had a pinch hitter brought late into the game for her, but she was able to draw a walk in that second inning, as we mentioned. Currently leading this Northwestern team in home runs with eight of them. The 0-1. Line drive in a left field, charging on his slot. Schlosser, she makes the cash. She was positioned really well there for the first out of the inning. Batting 289 on the season, the 1-0. Fastball misses upstairs, 2-0 now. Yeah, it seems like everyone in Northwestern had some sort of hitting streak or on-base yeah. streak going into the game. And can see, and just a credit to the... Badgers pitching staff yesterday only allowing one run to a team that's very dangerous with the bats. There's a strike at the top of the zone, a much needed one at that. Count moves to two and one. Kelsey Nader, a freshman out of Canton, Michigan. Coach Drohan talked to us about both Nader and Ayana Lindsay, both freshmen, both have stepped in in big roles for this team this year. Lindsay especially, who plays multiple positions in the field. Nader mostly just an outfielder. Look at Monticelli battling back here from 2-0 to 2-2 now against Nader. Yeah, that 2-0 pitch is going to prove to be kind of pivotal here. If that would have missed high, it would have been 3-0. This at-bat could have been looking a lot different, but now Monticelli's got two strikes. Badgers fans starting the slow clap here at Goodman Diamond. Monticelli looking for her second K. Instead, it's going to be grounded over to the shortstop. Hubbard throws on to third in time. Good job by Ellie Hubbard getting the lead runner, and there's two away now here in the second. Yeah, that was just great instincts from Ellie Hubbard there. Not only do you get the lead runner, but that's just the easier play. You, she has her momentum carrying her that way and able to get the lead runner in a double play situation. But, you know, you don't really want to try anything when your momentum's taking you the opposite way over there. And Nader very fast and right anyways, so might as well just get the lead runner, two outs, ready for Monticelli to face the next batter. The base is only being 60 somewhat feet apart. It's going to be really hard to turn double plays. It's what part of what made yesterday's double play with Hannah Cady so vital and such a big play. Grace Nito tried to lay down the bunt to start off her at bat, but took a pitch, so it's 1 0. Nito yesterday dazzled that second base, made one of the better plays we've seen this softball season. Yeah, plenty of second base options for Drohan, but obviously you keep Nito in the field because. She can make plays like the one that we saw yesterday. 
Chopper right back to third. Sardashny couldn't field it cleanly. Tough play for sure. Might want to see if Coach Healy comes out and maybe says that one went off the plate. Definitely going to want to take another look at it here, but nice job that time by Nito just putting the ball in play. Sardashny might have not been able to make the play even if she fielded it cleanly. Yeah, Grace Nito, one of the slap hitters for this Northwestern team. Plenty of speed that can beat out a softly hit ball. Sardashny, Angelopoulos, and Monticelli all go in for that one. Sardashny ends up calling for it and just can't make the play, but very tough one indeed. I'm a little shocked by that. They're going to rule it an error on Skylar Sardashny. Yeah, I don't know about that. I really doubt she would have been able to make the play even if she fielded it cleanly. Either way now to the nine hole hitter, Kansas Robinson, we go. First pitch in, misses upstairs. Yeah, Kansas Robinson, the other young second baseman other than Grace Needle, the freshman, Big Ten freshman of the week. Obviously a very prolific hitter for this team, but it's getting the nod here at DP. 1-0. Big swing and a miss, evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Last night, Kansas Robinson hit a big double back in the fifth inning, so she's going to see if she can continue that today, the ringing Big Ten freshman of the week. With her double two, her on-base streak extended to 13 games. Yeah, someone going into the season, Grace Nito had an excellent freshman season last year. So you expect her to get most of the starts at second base, but Kansas Robinson just from the start of the season able to hit her way onto this lineup. Designated player today is Robinson. The 2-1. That one left upstairs, 3-1 and one now. Nowhere to put Robinson. Base is loaded, two outs here. You cannot pitch another ball if you're Monticelli. No, you don't want to walk your nine hitter for sure. And even saying that Kansas Robinson doesn't seem like your typical nine she's hitter because she's hitting 296 with plenty of power as well. You mentioned the double, but even then, you don't want to go back to the top of the order. Vital pitch here, the 3-1, and a vital swing and a miss. Monticelli with a... Very good pitch there. Yeah, Moves the count full. It's exactly what you want there if you're Monticelli. It goes high with the fastball. Kansas Robinson knows she's going to get something to hit, so you don't want to put it exactly in the zone. She has the green light. Looks like they changed that error on Sardashny to a hit, in fact. Just so you're aware for all our scorekeepers out there. Here comes the payoff. Check swing. Did she go around? No, she did not, says third pace umpire Steve Gould. It's a walk, and the Northwestern Wildcats lead one to nothing. Yeah, there you go. Deja vu there. Top of the second inning yesterday, Grace Nito with the RBI walk. Now Shellmeyer back up to the plate for her second time in as many innings. She grounded out her last time up. First pitch, she hits a hard foul ball into the netting. Yeah, like I mentioned, with the bases loaded, Schellmeyer just able to put so much pres pressure on the defense just with her speed and her ability to put the ball in play. Makes it a lot harder when you got base runners out there too. Makes the situation a lot more high pressure. The 1 High fly ball, foul territory left field. Moving over Schlosser. She can't make the catch. Good effort there from Schlosser. Just out of her reach. But you get the strike. On Schellmeyer, 0-2 now. Saw that from Kelsey Nader in the bottom of the first inning as well, laying out for a ball hit to right field instead of left. Both teams showing off the effort a little bit early. Northwestern up one to nothing. Yeah, both teams coming to play out here early on. They definitely want these wins against each other, know how good the competition is. The 0-2. Chopped over to shortstop. Hubbard fields and fires on the first in time. And that'll do it for the inning, but not before the Wildcats get a run. What a catch. First pitch in now to Ellie Hubbard. Going to miss a little bit above the zone, one nothing. Or 1-0, oh, excuse me, I should say. Yeah, that Nito play, definitely amazing. In a one-run game, you don't want your leadoff hitter or your opponent's lead leadoff hitter reaching base. and. Nito took one away there from Riley Crane, who is one for two on the day. Not only do you get that leadoff runner out, it creates a lot of momentum for your team. I was back in the seventh inning as well, just such a vital moment in the game. 
So the 2-0 pitch is going to be on the outside corner for a strike, 2-1 and one now. Jake, I've been looking all morning long at ESPN, trying to see if that Grace Nito play made it to the Sports Center top ten. If anyone, if anyone knows, let us know here at Big Ten Plus. We're trying to see. Certainly deserving of it. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a 3-1 count now to Ellie Hubbard. Hubbard, one of three lefties in this lineup, facing off against the right-handed Henry. 3-1, way outside. So just the same way the first inning started, we have a leadoff walk here in the second. Yeah, that double play that Kayla Conway hit into the first inning. Of course, got robbed of that single that you just watched by Grace Nita. Yeah, made an excellent contact yesterday. Obviously, Nito robbed her of that hit, but it isn't, isn't unfounded for Riley Crane this season. She has been excellent all year long. Only a freshman from Tucson, Arizona. This count moves to one and one. Immediate impact are the words that come to mind when you think of Riley Crane. She played with Kelsey Jenkins on a USA team once, and Jenkins, the former Badger, actually advocated for her, Coach Healy said. Coach Healy trusted Jenkins' opinions, and look how it's working out. Crane hitting close to 300 on the year. Yeah, not only that, but she just seems like someone that could fit into any spot on the lineup. She's had plenty of games at leadoff today, and you'd also see her going in as a eight or nine hitter. Today, she's playing the five. Interesting, too, especially from this year as compared to last year, you see Coach Healy and, and the Badgers tinkering with their lineup a lot more, a lot more flexibility. Now that Katie Keller is a part of this team, a couple extra hitters moved on. And you can see Coach Healy's enjoying just trying to see what works with this team. Yeah, a lot of flexibility for her, especially in the infield. 2-2, Two -two. just misses the outside corner, count runs full. Stone Cold take that time from Crane. Yeah, only a freshman, too, and taking pitches like that, that's, that's how you know you got a good hitter on your hands. The 3-2, that one in the dirt. Nice at back, back-to-back -back walks here to start off the second. Two runners on for Wisconsin, nobody out. Definitely in a good spot here if they're looking to score their first run of the series. Struck out for her first time since March 12th. You don't see it very often from her. She's first pitch swinging, high fly ball in the right field. Kelsey Nader makes the catch. And quickly, there's one away. Angelopoulos had her five-game hit streak snapped yesterday. First pitch touches the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, Angelopoulos. Five-game hitting streak, as you mentioned. But really behind the plate is what she's known for, an excellent pitch caller, able to get some strikes from with Monticelli early on in this game. Count evens up at one and one here. There you see Cammy Henry on the mound in her first season at Northwestern this year. She induces a big swing and a miss that time from Angelopoulos. Yeah, that 1-1 one, one pitch is so vital in determining the outcome for the at-bat and able to get a swing and miss out of Angelopoulos there. 1-2, the and she gets another swing and miss right there. Strikeout for out number two here in the second. You can make good contact with it. It feels almost inevitable it's going to go out. But instead, first pitch swinging for uh, Skylar Serdashny. It's going to be the left fielder, Angela Zedak, making the catch to retire the side. So they're going to try to add on here in the third, and it's going to be Maeve Nelson leading things off. Yeah, one run on only one hit, and even then that hit just a little blooper that Sir Dashney just wasn't able to make a play on. But clean slate for Monticelli now facing Maeve Nelson. Nelson still looking to keep her average above the Mendoza line. She takes a strike on the inside corner. Boy, what a pitch from Monticelli there. Yeah, no, Monticelli certainly has... Had good stuff all game, just little control issues for her. 14 walks on the season. That leads the Badgers staff, although not a huge number. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty remarkable that 14 walks on the year actually leads the staff. It's a great number to have. 
Yeah, it's some it's something you see with a lot of these high strikeout pitchers. It's kind of a give and take. You you get a lot of nasty pitches that go outside of the zone that batters whiff on, but if they're able to lay off it, it can lead to some free passes. Monticelli looking for her second strikeout of the game still. Crowd making some noise here. The one, two. Just off the outside corner. Great pitch there for Monticelli. Even better take from Nelson. Yeah, that's exactly where you want your one, two pitch right there. See if you can get a chase. And if not, close enough to zone, maybe you can get a call if you're feeling really good. But Nelson, great take there. If I'm Monticelli, I might be just going back to that same exact spot. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside that time and fouled off. Boy, Nelson turned on that one. Yeah, she was ready. Gets the barrel on the bat. Nelson, the only strikeout of the game for Northwestern so far. Crowd starting up the slow clap again. The 2-2. Two -two. Off the inside corner. Monticelli getting pinched a little bit here. Count runs full. Yeah, it's a great location, too, on another two-strike pitch. Low and inside, trying to clip that bottom right corner of the zone. Nelson with another good take there. Had a really, this is shaping up to be a really good leadoff at bat for him. Here comes the payoff. Pop up, shortstop, Ellie Hubbard right there. One away here in the third. Yeah, Nelson not taking any chances with pitches close to the zone on that one. Good positioning so far from the Badgers today. We saw earlier a big line out from Angela Zedak hit right to Molly Schlosser that time. Felt like that pop-up just found the glove of Ellie Hubbard. Yeah, Hubbard, a veteran at the shortstop position, able to position herself well. You don't see too many huge shifts in softball, but a few steps here and there. First pitch into Jordan Rudd on the inside corner for a strike. Rudd popped out her last time up. Still batting 318 on the season. Yeah, top of the order for Northwestern just this series not doing the amount of damage that they usually do. You can see Monticelli going east to west a lot too. First pitch in this at bat on the inside corner, that one maybe just an inch off the outside. Yeah, just trying to vary her locations, throw these hitters off guard. Working so far in the inning little north and south action for her as well. There's the north of that north and south and missed upstairs. Monticelli, not in love with that call. Yeah, and Angelopoulos certainly thought it was a strike, holding it there, trying to frame it well. Two one, popped up foul and out of play. Actually right back into the booth here at Goodman Diamond. It's nice of Rudd to try to give us a souvenir. <laughs> Rudd still looking to extend her six game hitting streak and 10 game on base streak. Big pitch coming up here. The 2 2. High pop up. Going to stay in play here for Angelopoulos, and she makes the catch. Two away. Yeah, that's a tough play for a catcher to make. Facing the sun like that, usually they're able to spin around to the other side so the ball is coming at them, but that one just not enough time in the air, and Angelopoulos makes that play with the ball going away for her. It's much more difficult than it looks. Yeah, really. She did make that play look pretty easy. So it's going to be Hannah Cady now. Swinging and missing at the first pitch. Katie worked a walk last inning. That started off a second inning that allowed the Wildcats to score one run. Yeah, we've harped on it all day so far, but this Northwestern team just so disciplined. 
The 0-1 off the outside corner, 1-1. One and one. Part of that discipline allows them to get on base whenever they can. Now Hannah Cady has reached base in seven straight games. Monticelli deals the 1-1. One, one. Outside the zone, 2-1 and one now. You look at it for Northwestern, for a lot of teams, this seems like it would be their cold stretch where a lot of hits just aren't falling and stuff just isn't working out for them. But for this team, with their ability to draw walks and just get on base by any means necessary. Oh, 2-1 right by Katie, 2-2 two two now. It just seems like even in their cold stretches, they're still able to put runs on the board. The real thing that sticks out to me about this Northwestern lineup, Jake, it's great top to bottom. They have no bad hitters in this lineup, no bad hitters on their bench either. The 2-2 is a high drive, deep to right field. Moving back is Brooke Kuffel. She's at the track, and it's going to go off the wall. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about. No bad hitters in this lineup as Hannah Cady gets herself a two-out double. Yeah, four home runs on the season for her. That's her eighth double on the year. First extra base hit of the day for either team. Man, that ball had some carry to it. You can see Katie just got a touch under it. She got a little bit more over that one. I'm sure it would, would, would have went over the wall, 218 to right center. Yeah, great timing. She knew what was coming, and she was able to hit it well, just not able to quite get her bat quite up to that height. But they'll take it, run around second, two outs here. So Monticelli has to work out of a mini jam here with two away. It's going to bring up Nikki Cochran. Big swing and a miss for strike one to Cochran. Cochran was hit with a pitch her last time up to the plate and actually scored the only run of the game so far. Yeah, just one of those instances of Northwestern just getting on by any means necessary, and she was able to capitalize on that, scoring the run on the Kansas Robinson walk. That one, a blooper in the left field coming over Schlosser. It's going to be a base hit. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's going to be offline. It's an RBI double for Nikki Cochran, and the Wildcats lead two to nothing. Yeah, that's a great piece of hitting from Nikki Cochran right there. Just able to extend her bat out across the plate and just poke that one over Skyler Serdashny's head, forcing Molly Schlosser to come in and make a play at the plate. Zedak hit a hard line drive right to Molly Schlosser her last time up to the plate. She's swinging on that first pitch, off-speed pitch from Magnanimo. Yeah, and a lot of that damage done to Peyton Monticelli, well, it's come with two outs in this inning, and then just the one top of the second for her with a lot of those free passes as well. I think a much better performance than her line indicates. I would tend to agree against a really tough hitting team as well. Count moves to one and one on Zedek. Magnanimo has three complete games so far this season. The 1-1. One, one. Big wave to miss that time. 1-2 and two now on Z-Deck. Yes, yeah, seventh relief of appearance for Tessa this year. Very versatile, both as a starter and as a reliever. A big pitch here, the 1-2. One, that one, about three feet below the plate. Yeah, Moves up to two and two. Angelopoulos called for that one low. Bit too low on that one. Skips in the dirt. But plenty of waste pitches yet in this at-bat for Magnanimo. That's what getting ahead gives you the ability to do. Magnanimo, a master at getting ahead of counts. She pitched a couple weeks ago here against Illinois where she did just that so often. There, Zedek's going to pop it up right to Hubbard for the final out of the inning. Three pop-outs in this inning, but a run scored on two hits for Northwestern and one man left on base. Kimmy Henry back out for her third inning of work. Been a really efficient first two innings for her. She's going to start things off against Molly Schlosser with the ball. Schlosser's first at-bat of the day. 
Well, no. Off the outside part of the zone, count moves to 2-0. Schlosser, a 260 hitter on the year. 17 RBIs as well. A lot of speed there. Definitely helps her in the outfield and on the base paths as well. Quickly, the nine-hole hitter for Wisconsin up 3-0 and now. If you're Henry right here, you probably just want to throw one right down the middle of the plate, get yeah, a strike. make Schlosser earn it for sure. You don't want to go up facing Keller and Conwent with a runner on. Well, there is a strike. Not right down the middle, but at the knees. It's all about testing your opponent, making sure that your stuff is better than their stuff. That's what Henry's doing here. 3-1 popped up, high fly ball on in the infield. Cochran's coming over, she makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Worked to walk her first time up. She takes a strike here to start off this at bat. Keller did not get a double yesterday, but she has 72 of them all time throughout her career. That's fourth best ever in NCAA softball. Yeah, and someone too, even after transferring schools, has just picked up right where she's left off and gets to face some really good com competition like this Northwestern team. High fly ball, deep right field. It is gone. Katie Keller gets her fifth home run of the season and the Badgers are on the board. It's two to one. Get their first run of this series. Now two to one. First pitch into Kayla Conwitt now, one and oh. Love to see the launch angle on that <laughs> home run there. That was a line drive that just barely scraped over the top of the wall, hit super hard. Now two and oh on Kayla Conwitt. Now if you're the Badgers, you want to continue to carry that momentum that Keller has just given you. You got another great power hitter at the plate. Yeah, that's what's so good about Kayla Conwitt is that even though she's hitting second, made to be a run producer with the bat, is that she has plenty of experience leading off too. And with the bases empty, that's essentially what she's doing here. So just draw out the count, make Henry's day harder and get on base and see what your lineup can do after that. 2-1, misses inside, three and one to Conlet. Conlet. Again, Con went her last time up. Ground into a vital double play in the first inning after Keller worked a leadoff walk. Can't do that here, however. 3-1 popped up, shortstop side. Maeve Nelson makes the catch, and there's two away. Kuffle is a player who really production-wise is right up there with Keller and Conwent. Few less games played for her, seven games less started. But when she's in there, her numbers speak for herself. That's for sure, a 340 plus hitter this year is Brick Kuffel. Still looking to extend her seven game hitting streak. Foul ball again out of play. Count moves to one and two now. Plenty of pop in that bat as well. With two outs here, the game kind of stops becoming about getting runners on base and seeing what you can do in the inning and just free swinging and seeing what you can do there. There's a line drive past the third baseman, Hannah Katie, and it's going to go all the way into left field. Kuffel takes a big turnaround first, but she'll hold up right there. It's a single with two outs for Brooke Kuffel. Nevin with seven stolen base attempts seems to go to, seems to be the go-to pinch runner for Coach Healy. Big wave and a miss from Ellie Hubbard on the first pitch of her at bat. Hubbard worked a walk her last time out. Not a common thing you see from Cami Henry. Henry fifth in the Big Ten in walks allowed per game. Yeah, one. That one left load actually gets past Rudd. Moving on to second base is Nevin. 
She's going to hold up there, so called a wild pitch, and now the Badgers have a runner in scoring position. Yeah, we were just talking about how important it was that that double was prevented and turned into a single, but now you have that runner in scoring position anyways, puts a lot more pressure on Henry. Again, not often you see a wild pitch go against the Wildcats. Again, Jordan Rudd named the best defensive player of the year last year in all of NCAA softball. She catches one above the zone that time, so count moves to two and one on Hubbard. Coach Drohan was quick to take out Lauren Boyd just after three innings last game. So maybe lot. that's something to keep an eye on here for Henry. 100%. 2-1 high fly ball right at the center fielder, Shellmeyer. She makes the catch, and that'll retire the side, but not before the Badgers get one run off a big solo shot from Katie Keller. Fans in the parking lot this morning tailgating, so that'll tell you how nice it is. Montanamo's first pitch into Nader misses outside, so the count goes 1-0. Montanamo coming back in for... Not her second full inning of work, but her second total inning of work. Faced one batter last inning and forced a pop out from Angela Zedek. Yeah, Northwestern really looks like they had something going in that inning, but Mananimo just coming in and shutting things down. Nader hit a ground ball to the shortstop last time out. Ended up being a fielder's choice when Hubbard got the lead runner out at third. Manyanamo deals the 1-1. One, one. Going to lay down a bunt right back to Manyanamo. She fires on the first in time, and there's one away. I haven't seen too many bunts this series so far. Nader laying one down there, seeing if she could beat it out and the leadoff spot. Probably don't see too many bunts just because all these players are just so capable of getting base hits, just swinging regularly. It, just seems pointless to try to bunt, but in a low scoring game like this, you want to try to reach in as many ways as possible. So Nito up to the plate next, immediately grounds it over to Hubbard. She makes the play and very, very quickly here in the fourth, there's two away. Yeah, Grace Nito with that little slap hit right there. That's how she got the first hit of the game. Just a little infield dribbler that Skyler Serdashny wasn't able to pick up. Up next going to be Kansas Robinson now. Already the third hitter of the inning after only three pitches dealt by Manyanamo. And first one into Robinson is going to be a strike. Robinson had an RBI walk her last time up with the bases loaded. Back in the second inning. Fans making a ton of noise here at Goodman. This is by far the loudest I've heard it so far this season. The 2-1, little excuse me swing, going to roll foul. Count goes to 0-2 now. Yeah, Minanmo just not allowing too many fly balls so far in her short appearance. Everything's been kept in the infield. Not getting a ton of good contacts, these Northwestern hitters are. Fans making more noise here. Good crowd here at Goodman. Monyanamo looking for her first strikeout of the game. The 0-2. That one left very high. Angelopoulos liked the spot, however. Yeah, it's a pitch you might see Angelopoulos call for again. See if they can get Robinson to chase it upstairs. Another two-strike pitch coming up. And left a little bit outside. Really good at bat here from Robinson, working the count back to Ethan. That's something that's so impressive to me as a freshman, just falling down into an 0-2 count and then able to lay off two consecutive pitches after that. Just shows you just how ahead of the game this freshman is. And just like that, she works the count full. Three straight balls by Manyanamo. Northwestern still looking for their first base runner of the inning. Robinson pretty good at getting on base. Now has reached base in 14 straight games thanks to her walk back in the second. On base percentage up in the 420s. 
Payoff pitch fouled off. So we'll do it again. Over, over Robinson's last six games, Jake, get this. Three doubles, one triple, and one home run. A lot of extra base power you're seeing lately. Yeah, I'd like to see your slugging percentage in those games there. A lot of extra base hits. The 3-2. Swing and a miss for strike three. Tessa Magnanimo works a 1-2-3 fourth to keep the Northwestern Wildcats off the board. Riley Crane to lead things off for the Badgers here in the bottom of the fourth, facing Cami Henry. She takes back her bunt, so count moves 2-1-0 on Crane. Crane walked her last time up back in the second inning. What an impressive series it's been so far for her, just against this excellent Northwestern pitching staff. She's going to ground that one right to the shortstop, Maeve Nelson. She fires on the first in time. So quickly one away. First pitch into Bannon. That one left upstairs. Count moves to one and zero. Bannon 0 for one on the day. Flew out her last time up. Now ahead two and zero in the count. And in a very speedy player, she gets on base. Definitely a threat to make it into scoring position. 2-0 misses upstairs, so 3-0 now on Banton. Remember, Banton, her last at-bat swung at the first pitch, so you're already seeing a little more patience here. And Jordan Rudd wants to talk with Cammie Henry. Yeah, just trying to calm her pitcher down there. A little bit erratic in the last inning as well. Looking to bounce back here. With the doubleheader today, it's going to be interesting to see how both coaches utilize their bullpen. The 3-0. Pitch taken on the inside corner, so the count moves to 3-1. and one. As we've already seen, Coach Healy taking out Monticelli pretty early in this game, deciding to replace her with Magnanimo. We'll see how long Cami Henry stays in. There's a line drive into left field. Zedek coming on, but it's going to fall for a base hit. With one away here in the fourth, Peyton Bannon gets on the board. Bill me up Buttercup over the loudspeakers here. First pitch into the catcher. High pop-up, foul territory, third base side. Hannah Cady makes the catch. Now there's two away. Bat in the hands of Serdashny. Beautiful off-speed pitch to start this at-bat. Count moves to 0-1. Interesting note here, too. The both, both times the Badgers have put the ball in play on the first pitch of that bat, it's been a pop-out. Not sure if being aggressive was in the scouting report today for Wisconsin. Quickly now. Cammy Henry ahead 0-2 on Serdashny. Yeah, and whether you want to swing at the first pitch or not, that's going to change along in the game. And see, Henry, it's been going a bit longer in counts as this game has gone on. Swing and a miss for strike three. What a pitch that time from Cam Cammy Henry to get out of the inning. Shellmeyer to lead things off for Northwestern here in the fifth. First pitch just misses the outside corner. Count goes to 1-0. Shellmeyer 0 for 2 on the day. Two ground outs, both of which to Ellie Hubbard at shortstop. Northwestern definitely look to get an insurance run here. I'm sure they're tired of playing with a one-run lead in this series. Count moves to 2-0 on Shellmeyer. How about Magnanimo as of late for the Badgers? Pitched a complete game shutout at Purdue not that long ago. Earlier in the week, DePaul, she pitched two innings of scoreless softball. Did have a little bit of trouble against St. Thomas recently. As there's a high fly ball deep into center field. Shellmeyer gets that one over the wall. It's a home run. How about that shot from Skyler Shellmeyer? The solo shot, and the Cats go up 3-1. to one. Yeah, you can see they're all excited there, and they have a reason to be. Shellmeyer, in her five years of playing, that's only her second career home run. Not something you see out of a speedy leadoff hitter that much, but 
She was able to really muscle that one all the way out to the opposite field, too. Wind helping her out a little bit, but going over Peyton Bannon's head, and Northwestern gets the insurance run they're looking for. You mentioned it. That ball carried out into center field. Wind blowing in that out left field direction. So might have gotten helped out there, but what a shot from Skyler Shellmeyer. So as you mentioned, Jake, Cats needed that insurance run. They got it there. Let's see how Mignanimo bounces back here against Maeve Nelson. Nelson's going to lay down a bunt right back to Mignanimo. Barehanded pickup, throw on the first in time. So good bounce back pitch right there. Yeah, and that's something you definitely get out of Mananamo for sure is the, just the veteran experience and just being able to pitch through traffic and even when going down, just being able to bounce back, quickly get in the out there. Jordan Rudd up next for the Cats. First pitch in. Misses the outside corner. Count goes to 1-0. and Rudd 0 for 2 on the day. Two pop-outs. 1 for 6 so far in this series against the Badgers. The 1-0. Nice scoop that time from Angelopoulos. Count goes to 2-0. and Not a lot of noise for Rudd this series. Unexpected for her. The 2-0. 3-0 now on Rudd. Something interesting about that home run by Skylar Schellmeyer, as you mentioned. On the other side of things, Monyanimo, that's only her fourth home run given up on the entire year. Came in today with the sixth, sixth best record in the Big Ten in terms of home runs given up. 3-0 pitch, a little get me over fastball for a strike. Three and one now. Improbable on both sides of the plate, that last home run. Not what you're expecting with that matchup. 3-1. Grounded back up the middle. It's through for a base hit. Two hits on the inning now for the Wildcats, and Rudd gets aboard. Yeah, we haven't seen a ton of hits sneak through the infield this series, but... Rudd just hits that one so hard, it's able to go right up the middle, and Northwestern's got something going on with one out here. Ayanna Lindsay, one of those young hitters that Coach Dorian was high on. First pitch in there for a strike. Count moves to 0-1 on Katie. Four eye on a Lindsay on the year. Three for four on stolen bases. Certainly a threat to go. Might see her on this 3-2 count. Count moves to one and one now on Katie. Foul ball out of play. So Katie moves to one and two, and both are at bat so far today. Katie has been down to two strikes. But both times she's been able to reach base, so we'll see if Monyanimo can finally put her away. Katie's spectacular season this year. Not a surprise after being a first ten Big Ten, first team All Big Ten honoree last season. He has had five plate appearances so far this series, able to reach four times so far. Badgers have had a lot of trouble getting her out. The 2-2. Two -two. Just off the outside corner of the plate. A good frame job there from Angelopoulos, but couldn't get the call. Count moves full. Yeah, these Badger pitchers have been not able to really get these 1-2, two, 2-pitch two 
called strikeouts that they've been looking for all day. The payoff. High pop up left field. Schlosser calls everyone off, makes the catch, and there's two away. Nikki Cochran up next for the Cats. She's also had a really good day today at the plate. A double, an RBI, a run scored, and she was hit by a pitch. Well, it's been business as usual for her. Been hitting well all season long. A 360-plus hitter right now is Cochran. First pitch in. Fouled off into the netting. Just really no sense of relief for any of these Badgers pitchers. You get one out, and then all of a sudden you have to face Nikki Cochran <laughs> off the plate. Not usually what you see out of your five hitter. A one misses upstairs. Count goes to one and one. Worth noting, Ayanna Lindsay over on first base, too, taking some pretty big leads after the pitch is thrown. Yeah. Trying to fake out Angelopoulos a few times, too, taking off, going back. Trying to draw the throw over from Angelopoulos, something that she likes to do. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled off into the netting, so 1-2 and two now. Angelopoulos yesterday actually threw down two first, but went past first baseman Katie Keller, and runner was able to make their way up to second. It's two outs, I'm sure that will not be happening. Big pitch coming up from Anyanimo, the one-two. Line drive, center field, Peyton Bannon's there. She makes the catch, and that'll do it. Henry's gotten into trouble at times today on the mound, but she's mostly been able to get out of it as first pitch swinging for Schlosser. She hits a fly ball right to Shellmeyer. One pitch, one away here in the fifth. Throwing 58 pitches. That was her 59th that we just saw. Now here's number 60. It's going to be in there for a strike. Katie Keller, of course, provided the only run so far for the Badgers this season, or series. There's a line drive in the left field, but it's going to be right at Angela Zedak. And now there's two away. Not sure if that pitch hit her. It doesn't look like it. So it's going to be one and no. Scary pitch for sure, though. How many times have you said Kayla Kahn went and not being able to reach on base. It's probably the first time ever. Yeah, probably for me, I'm very sure that's the first time ever. Count moves to one and one. Kahn when she grounded into a double play back in the first and then popped out in the third. Average still sitting way above 300. On the outside corner for a strike right there. So Kahn having to pr protect a bit, excuse me. It's the on-base percentage for Conwent, though. That's so impressive. Over 500 for the year. Someone that reaches base more times than not. The one-two. Really good spot for that one-two pitch. Just missed outside. They can tell Henry really wanted that one. Walking off the mound. Good frame job from Rudd. Keeping it there. Trying to get the call for a pitcher. Henry looking to get through a 1-2-3 fifth. Conwitt stays alive. Heads up in the crowd. Boy. Smoking line drive right into the right field bleachers. Hope everyone's all right. Yeah. A very attentive crowd today. Not just full of people, but full of engaged fans as well. Certainly helps when you've played two very close games so far this series. The 2-2. Line drive in the left field. Will it stay fair? No. Just a couple of feet to the left of that left field foul line. We'll do the 2-2 yet again. Yeah, that ball was in fair territory for quite a bit. It looks like it even passed over the bag still in fair territory, but blinds were wind blowing out to left a little bit. Just hooked it to the left side of that line.
The 2-2. Line drive in the right center field this time. That one's going to split the outfielders and go all the way to the wall. Conwin's gunning for second. Here's the throw. It's not going to be in time. With two away here in the fifth, Kayla Conwin gets herself a double. First pitch in. Going to go inside, and Couple's going to say it hit her. So the Badgers now, with two away, have a little bit of a rally going as they got two on. The pressure doesn't amp up. You're still able to approach this at-bat as if there is no runners. Just try to do your best against the at-bat in hand and not worry about the runners that are on. First pitch to Hubbard in there for a strike. Couple might have sold that hit by pitch a little bit. It was definitely very close. Umpire's got a better view than we do. Yo, one pitch left a little bit above the zone. One and one now. Now we feel a nervous anxiousness, excitement. Badger from the fans here at Goodman Diamond. Badgers fans want their team to inch their way back into this game. Off-speed pitch, beautifully placed on the outside part of the zone. Count moves to one and two. Badgers are 0 for 7 today with runners on base. We've left four runners on base in total. The one, two. High fly ball, deep center field. Shellmeyer's there. Backing up, she makes the catch. Now make it six runners left on base for the Badgers throughout the day. Cats hold on to the lead, still three to one, as we head into the sixth inning. But only three runs for the Cats, only one run for the Badgers so far, as Angela Zedak's going to lead things off for Northwestern. First pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Zedak 0 for 2 on the day. Hard line out back in the second and then a pop out in the third. Monyanimo still on the mound for Wisconsin. The you know, one left way high. Count evens up at 1-1. One and one. Some dueling chance here at Goodman from some Northwestern fans and Wisconsin fans. As the game gets later, you can tell these crowds a bit more antsy, especially towards each other. The 1-1. One, one. On the outside corner for a strike, beautifully placed, 1-2 and two now. And i got to say, Jake, what a difference this crowd makes in the game. Just the environment, the vibes. It's just a fantastic day being here, getting to call two games. Yeah, and it's certainly something that these players love. It, it, it keeps their energy up as well. There's a blooper in the right field. That one has eyes, and it's going to be a base hit for Angela Zedak. Great piece of hitting from Zedak there. Facing two strikes, you get a ball that's very low in the zone, but swinging away, expand your strike zone a little bit with two strikes, able to make contact and get it just over Katie Keller's head. And now the Wildcats have something going on. Lead it, lead off runner on, zero outs. Angle. She was on that pitch right there, but just fouled it off straight back into the netting. Farnham, a 179 hitter so far this season. Only made two starts last season, seeing some more playing time this year. It's two home runs on the year. The 0 1. Way upstairs. Magnanimo voicing her frustration a bit. 1 and 1. Interesting move, too, taking out the lefty and Kelsey Nader and replacing her with the righty in Farnham. She's swinging at that inside pitch and barely not hitting that one in play. She's on it. Got moves to one and two. Farnham's another player that Coach Drohan touched on with us a little bit. Both her and Kendall Peterson just gives Coach Drohan a lot of flexibility in terms of veteran pinch hitters. 
she fouls that one straight back yet again. Yeah, her, Kendall Pe Peterson, and Bridget Donahue as well is someone that can all always come in, give you a good at-bat, challenge the pitcher a little bit. Switch, switch stuff up just so you don't get used to pitching against the same hitters throughout the entire lineup. The one-two. High fly ball, foul territory, and out of play. Whoever was in the bullpen for the Badgers ended up making the catch. Count remains at one and two. Good at bat so far from Farnham. Yeah, a bit of pop in the bat for her as well. Two home runs on the year in limited appearances. Monyanimo looking for her second strike out of the game. The one, two. Check swing. Did she go around? No, she did not, said first base umpire Stacy Poulsen. Count evens up. We haven't seen a whole lot of elongated at-bats so far in this game. This one becoming one of the best. Yeah, no, plenty of good ones. Plenty of at-bats, too, where the batters just jump on the first pitch. Another foul ball there from Farnham. Fans here thought it was strike three. So we're two very good locations, those past two pitches. That's what you want if you're a pitcher. And getting one kind of little half check swing that went for a ball and then another swing and just foul. Fans starting the slow clap here at Goodman. The 2-2. Two -two. Off the outside corner, maybe a little bit below the knees. Tough take that time from Farnham, but the count runs full. Yeah, Tessa just working this count right now and putting together some really good pitches, but Farnham just has been able to keep it alive. Swing and a miss for strike three. Second strike out of the game for Tessa Monyanimo, and it's a big one at that as there's one away here in the sixth. Yeah, a huge strikeout for sure, especially when a pitch hitter comes in. Pinch hitter comes in, that tells you that Northwestern's ready to do some damage, and definitely a tough at bat, one that Monyanimo earned for sure. Angelopoulos and Monyanimo having a conversation out on the bump. Got up. Big hunched over swing. Hunched over stance, I should say. Check swing at hitter. They're calling it a foul ball. Yeah, I think that might have gotten the knob of the bat. No, oh. it, I think it definitely hit her, but she swung. Uh, so umpires are going to get together here. It looked like the call at the plate by home plate umpire Susan Eads. Or it might have gotten the knob of the yeah, bat, actually. Just barely. That's a tough one if you're a hitter. That's essentially, that's in your vicinity. You think it's going to hit you, and just the one little exposed part of the bat that you're holding just gets it instead. What are the umpires going to rule here? That's the question. Yvette Healy talking with home plate umpire Susan Eads. If this does remain as a hit by pitch, Kansas Robinson's going to be the next man up for Northwestern. And by the looks of it, Healy's arguing with the home plate umpire, so it looks like they're going to still rule this a hit-by-pitch. But we don't know for sure. Nothing's been confirmed. Yeah, very close on that angle. Could have hit the hand, could have hit the knob of the bat. Healy emphatically arguing her point here, and I think she's got an argument, if we're being honest. It was a check swing. Even if it wasn't a full swing, it still hit her during the motion. Healy yeah. reluctantly walks back to the dugout. Certainly with two runners on base, Kansas Robinson is a dangerous opponent, but even after that, you got the top of the lineup right after her as well. So she's trying to contain the damage as much as possible before this line lineup turns over. Grace Nito comes back in on first base to run for Kendall Peterson. Farnham is still on second. Fans here <laughs> at Goodman voicing their frustration a little bit with Susan Eads. 
First pitch coming into Kansas Robinson. Off speed pitch. Just misses the zone. Yeah, it certainly doesn't make anything easier for a pitcher when facing Kansas Robinson. A walk and a strikeout. Both lengthy at bats. Got an RBI on that walk as well, did Robinson. The 1 0. Fouled straight back into the netting. 1 and 1 now. Pivotal pitch coming out here. Angelopoulos definitely wants to make sure that they're on the same page for that. Seen a good amount of mound visits so far today. Well, it makes sense when your pitchers are pitching well but still have to navigate through as many base runners and long at-bats as these pitchers have. You want to make sure that your pitcher's still calm, you know, take the time off the mound to let them know it's all good. That one left a little outside the zone. Two and one now on Robinson. Fans here again getting on some of the umpires. Robinson, the reigning Big Ten freshman of the week. And get this note, Robinson, a, a true athlete. In high school, she was the captain of, of all of these teams, her softball team, her volleyball team, and her basketball team. Oh, wow. Swing and a miss that time around for strike two, however. She also has the, her high school record for most home runs in a season. So certainly a well-scouted player. Definitely someone that Northwestern is lucky to have. She's in a big moment here. The 2-2. Left up and above the zone. Count runs full. Yeah, full count. Runners on first and second with one out. Definitely want to give a good pitch to Kansas Robinson here especially with Shell Meyer's big home run, her last at-bat. The payoff. Left up and outside for ball four. The bases are juiced here in the sixth. Yeah, it's a good take by Kansas Robinson there, and in a great at-bat as well. Another full count seen in this game. Coach Healy taking the walk out to the mound here. One for three on the day with that big solo shot back in the fifth inning. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike. We've seen Magnanimo go to that off-speed pitch a lot on first pitches so far today. Yeah, I think that's something that Peyton Monticelli set up so nicely with that tremendous velocity on that pitch of her, you know, slow things down this time. Nice play by Angelopoulos behind the plate, preventing a run from scoring. Count evens up at one and one. Mm -hmm. Not only was that solo home run that Skyler Schellmeyer hit just her first home run of the season, but it was only her third extra base hit for the season as well. The one one. Hard hit ground ball through the right side of the infield for a base hit. One run scores. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's cut off. Two run score. It's a two RBI single for Skyler Schellmeyer, and the Wildcats take a 5-1 lead. Yeah, what a what a game for her, driving in three runs now out of Northwestern's five. And I was all set up by the bottom of the order for Northwestern, just able to get on base. She turned that leadoff hitter into a, a run producer. Also on that play, Kansas Robertson goes from first to third. Magnanimo still in the game. Big two RBI knock that time from Shellmeyer. Three RBIs total on the game. Runner takes off for second on that ball. Stand up stolen base that time around for Skyler Shellmeyer. Yeah, looks like Maeve Nelson was looking to lay one down there. It was going to be a little bunt and run for Northwestern. Doesn't get the bunt, but same effect. Runners on second and third. No more double play. The 
the 1-0. Change up off the inside of the plate, 1-1. One and one. Nelson 0 for 3 today, 0 for 7 so far in the series. She's another player. Definitely has good production, as we said earlier, 380 on base percentage for her. But also someone that you really want in there for the glove. Fastball right at the knees on the inside part of the zone. Count goes to one and two now. Excuse me, two and one. And even then in situations like this, someone who is so experienced with sacrifice hits and just making contact with the ball, you definitely want Nelson up here. Now the count goes to two and two. It's another off-speed pitch for Mananimo getting the called strike. Plenty of those today. Huge pitch coming up. Don't want to let Northwestern get any more ahead than they already are. The 2-2. High fly ball, deep left field. Schlosser's under it, however. She makes the catch. Tagging up from third is Robinson. She will score. It's a sacrifice fly for Maeve Nelson, and now a 6-1 ball game. That's exactly what you want from Maeve Nelson. Just put the ball in play and then hope that your runners can score from there. And that one definitely deep enough to where it was an easy play for Kansas Robinson to score. No real play at the plate. Nelson gets her first RBI of the series. Her 16th of the year. Now Jordan Rudd's up to the plate. First pitch into Rudd, misses upstairs. Rudd one for three on the day, had that single last inning. Take another single up the middle like that too. Surely with two outs, that'll be enough to score the runner from second. The 1-0. Off speed pitch, misses upstairs, 2-0 now. With her single in the fifth inning, Jordan Rudd now has a seven game hit streak, 11 game on base streak. Truly one of the Big Ten's best at the plate. The 1-0. Hard hit ground ball right to Serdashny at third. She fires over to first, and the side is retired. Here at this game, we got the number one team in the Big Ten versus the number two. First pitch misses outside to Riley Crane. Count moves to 1-0. and Cammie Henry back out there for her sixth inning of work. This point in the game, working with a five-run lead, I'd be surprised to see her pulled unless it gets particularly close again. Crane slaps that one the other way, but foul. Yeah, and that's something that this last inning really helped Northwestern for was just now you know for sure that Cammie Henry is probably going to stay in this game. Before last inning, you kind of think that you know, maybe she could still get pulled in a closer game, but a really a good game for Henry so far. Five innings pitched, only one earned run. Plenty of traffic, but she's been able to navigate it through really well, in part to her excellent defense as well. Infielders playing in. Obviously now they're ready for the bunt, thinking that that might have been the message from Coach Healy. Count moves to two and one, however. Didn't look like Crane was bunting there. Nope. Middle of the field looking wide open as well with those corners playing in, second and short. Well, there's a fly ball up through the middle of the field. That ball has eyes, and it's going to find some grass in the outfield for a leadoff single. And I don't think that hit would have fallen had the... Peyton Bannon do up next for the Badgers, one for two on the day. Beautiful off-speed pitch in there for a strike to start things out. Yeah, it'll be easy for the Badgers to think that they need to go and get some scoring here, but they really still need to approach these plate appearances the same way, taking pitches, just seeing what kind of base runners you can get, and then see what you can do from there. Two takes so far for Bannon in this plate appearance. The 1-1. One, one. Line drive through the infield for a base hit. Taking a big turn around second is Riley Crane, but she's going to stay put there. Peyton Bannon 
Gets a no-out single here and don't look now, but the Badgers are in business here in the sixth. She struck out and popped out in both of her at-bats. First pitch misses up and away. You can see the corners are playing pretty much even with the bag again. I mean, they're a little worried about Angelopoulos laying down a bunt. She's swinging away that time, however. Count goes to one and one. Yeah, definitely a bunting situation. Only one sack hit for Angelopoulos this year, but she's able to get one. You get two runners in scoring position, and like I said before, just getting across two in this inning is a win for the Badgers. Angelopoulos, she does have some pop. There's a line drive right to the first baseman, Cochran. She steps on first for two. Look back to second for three, but good base running that time from Crane. It's a great double play for the Wildcats, and now there's two away. So scored a line out three double play. Not often you see that. No. And it's going to bring up Skylar Serdashny. Serdashny 0 for 2 on the day. Seen her batting average drop a little bit below 300 in the last week or so. Big wave to miss that time, one and one. Now, as far as double plays go, that lineup wasn't the worst possible double play that could have happened. Badgers still have a runner in scoring position after that, as opposed to getting the lead runner out on a typical ground ball double play. The one one. Sir Dashney behind on that one, one and two now. Sardashny, one for five so far in this series against Northwestern. Kimmy Henry has just been able to pitch so well with runners on this game. That's for sure. There's been multiple opportunities where the Badgers have had two on, and she's just been able to get out of it. Just off the outside corner that time, Henry thought she had strike three. Instead, it evens up at two and two. Henry in yet another position where the Badgers have a runner in scoring position. The 2-2, high line drive, foul territory, left field. No one's going to get there. At one point in the second inning, Henry walked the first two batters and then was able to get three outs on just three pitches after that, or six pitches after that, including a strikeout. Had a runner in scoring position in the third. Henry was able to get out of that one. Had another runner in scoring position in the fifth. Only run of the day coming on the solo shot from Katie Keller back in the third for the Badgers. There's a blooper into center field, but right there is Shellmeyer, and that will end the inning. The Badgers put some pressure on, but a big-time double play off the bat of Chris Angelopoulos sees the Badgers not able to score any runs. First pitch in to Katie gets fouled off. Count goes to 0 and 1. Katie so far on the day, one for two, double and a walk and a run scored. Solo atop the Big Ten rankings in so many meaningful categories for Wisconsin. She misses that one down low. She's first in earned runs allowed, first in walks allowed, second in ERA, and third in home runs. Yeah, it tells you that Wisconsin still thinks that they can play this game and they don't want any more runs. Fastball right on the outside part of the zone. Count goes to one and two. You can see Salo loves to work off that fastball. It's super lively. It's been the reason for a lot of her success this year, just getting ahead into counts. The one, two. Line drive, but it's going to go foul. Katie late on that one. The speed is also such a difference from the last pitcher, Magnanimo, and just all the off speed that she was throwing, giving hitters a different look here, making them adjust. Salo looking for her first strike out of the day, the one two. Looked like an off speed pitch that time, just missed above the zone. Two and two now. 
Final line on Tessa Magnanimo in this game today. Three and a thirds innings pitched. Gave up four hits and four runs, all of which were earned. One walk and two strikeouts. The 2-2. Two -two. Line drive in the left field coming on is Schlosser, but she's not going to get there. It's a leadoff single for Hannah Cady here in the seventh. And still nobody away. It's been excellent two-strike hitting for Northwestern this game. It seems like they've just been able to work deep into counts, and even when the Badgers look like they're ahead, Northwestern just able to make good contact and get one out. Cochran up at the plate for Northwestern now with a runner on first and still nobody away. Salo's first pitch misses low and outside. Cochran also one for two on the day today. Had that RBI double back in the third inning. Scored a run after she was hit by a pitch in the second and flew out in the fifth. Excellent day at the plate. And she also in the field got that double play that really shut things down for the Badgers offense. She was late on that fastball from Salo. Count evens up at one and one. The 1-1. One, one. High fly ball, left center field. Coming over is Molly Schlosser. She makes the over-the-shoulder grab for two away. Excuse me, one away, I should have said. It's a tough play for Molly Schlosser. That one was right in the gap. She definitely had to be on her horse for that one. Looking directly into the sun as well. Yeah, made a tough play look easy, did Schlosser that time around. And it's a big first out. So now, Gabby Sal is going to have to face Angela Zedek. First pitch into Zedek. Off-speed pitch at the knees for a strike. What a pitch from Salo that time around. Yeah, getting ahead right away on Zedek. Singled down the line in her last inning for her first hit of the game. Ended up scoring a run. Chopper over to the shortstop side. This could be two. Hubbard for one, on to first, not in time. So call the fielder's choice for Angela Zedek that time, and there are two away. Yeah, excellent speed from Zedek there, able to beat it out. A little slow on the jump from shortstop to second on Ellie Hubbard's part, but lead runner out, two away now. And Kelsey Nader is back up to bat. Nader. First pitch she sees, chops that one, it's going to roll foul. Smart play by all parties there for Wisconsin to just let that one roll past the third baseline. Yeah, you don't want to pick up that ball too early and try to force a really tough throw to first, especially with Nader's speed out there. Be a tough play for Angelopoulos to make, so let it go foul. You got a strike, and now you're ahead in the count. Nader reached on a fielder's choice back in the second inning and then grounded out to Tessa Magnanimo back in the fourth. Corners playing in on her. The 0-1 pitch misses upstairs. The 1-1. Chopped over to second base, Riley Crane makes a nice grab, flips over to first in time. And that'll do it here in the seventh. Last chance for the Badgers, trying to make their way back from down five runs. They're going to start things off with Schlosser in the seventh. First pitch in, going to miss low and away. Schlosser, come. Um, oh, never as you mentioned, Schlosser, 0 for 2 on the day. Yeah, coming into this game, she was hitting 364 in her last eight games, but has yet to find a hit this series. 0 for 2 on the day. Takes a look at ball three right there. So she's in a good spot. She's been up to 3-0 once before today. 
That was back in the third inning. She proceeded to pop out back in that third. We'll see if that trend changes here. 3-0 misses upstairs, so it's a four-pitch walk to start off the seventh inning. Came on a solo shot back in the third, just snuck over that pole. There's a high fly ball, deep center field. Shellmeyer looking up, and Katie Keller has her second of the day. Don't look now, still no outs here in the seventh. The Badgers climb their way back. It's now six to three. Life Coming has back and rebounding. Feels like Badgers fans have been resurrected here in the bottom of the seventh. Coming back to life, making a lot of noise. Count goes to one and oh. As mentioned before, Kayla Conwent has plenty of experience leading off, so this is essentially a leadoff situation for her. Zero outs, nobody on, on board. It's a good off-speed pitch that time from Henry. Just missed the zone, maybe a little bit below. Conwent one for three on the day so far today. Now she's ahead 3-0. Ripped a double into right center last at bat. A lot of power, made it all the way to the track. The 3-0. Conwen thought about it, but it's the second four-pitch walk of the inning. So Brooke Cuffle up next for Wisconsin here. She's one for two on the day. Reached on a hit by pitch and a single. First pitch CC's down low in the dirt. We saw yesterday from Danielle Williams, she was doing a great job of utilizing her changeup and off-speed pitches. We'll see if she continues that trend today. Uh, there is an off-speed pitch right there, evens up the count. Yeah, certainly we'll probably see these batters taking the first few pitches, just getting a feel for how Williams pitches. But again, they saw plenty of her yesterday, so. There's a fastball just off the outside part of the zone. Count moves to two and one now. Hard hit ground ball, but just foul of the third baseline. Evens up yet again. Yeah, and there's still zero out, so you still, and with a new pitcher especially, you really want to just work the count, make her earn her outs really goes a long way in ensuring that you get on base and add to the runs. It's Bree Mitchell on first after the Kayla Conn went walk. Still nobody away. The 2-2. Soft ground ball over to the third base side. Katie can't handle it cleanly, and everyone's going to be safe. The play. First pitch inside to Hubbard. Count moves to 1-0. Not quite the final line on Cami Henry yet, but we got at least part of it today. Six plus innings pitched, seven hits, at least three earned, and she's responsible for the runner on second. Hubbard fouls that one off. Also five walks and three strikeouts for the Northwestern starter today. The one one from Williams. Soft ground ball to third. Katie tags the runner for one. Hard collision over at third base, and one out is all they'll get. Hopefully, Hannah Katie's okay. It's a windy day. It's a windy day, that's for sure. Wind, in fact, blowing straight out to center field. First pitch into Crane. On the outside part of the zone for a strike. Crane so far today, one for two. A walk and a single, as well as a ground out. Definitely who you want for the Badgers. She's been able to put the ball in play this entire series. Really good pitch that time. Just misses the zone. One and one. Outfield playing a little bit in on Riley Crane. Not too much. Mostly just center field. the center fielder, Skyler Schellmeyer. Crane lays one down but fouls it off. Crane has yet to hit a home run this year. And understand why the outfielders are playing her a little short. Only four extra base hits as well. 
definitely makes it hard for that runner on second to come around on a single. The one, two, fouled off. Good job by the freshman just staying alive here. What a series this has been. Even with Northwestern leading by five at one point, Wisconsin has gotten it back to where the tying run is at the plate right now. The one, two, up and away, two and two now. What a series it's been for both sides. Some great games. What a series it's been for Daniel Williams, at least so far. Had a four-inning save yesterday. Yeah, those are rare. You don't see too many saves that have more innings pitched than the starters. She's looking for, she would technically be allowed to save today if Northwestern holds on. But right now, Crane just putting up a tough at bat. Yeah, you come in as a freshman for this Badger team, and now you're facing the number one team in the Big Ten with a chance to tie the game or at least get some across in the bottom of the seventh in a two-strike count. The 2-2 two -two yet again. Line drive right to the second baseman. This could be two. On a second for one. On to first, not handled cleanly. Nikki Cochran just couldn't pick that one out of the dirt. It's another fielder's choice. Now there's two away here in the seventh. Yeah, it was actually almost able to grab that one without it getting into the webbing, but just kind of slipped out at the last second. Seventh hitter of the inning for Wisconsin. The 0-1. Off the outside part of the play, one and one now. High fly ball, center field, this could do it. Moving back, Shellmeyer, she makes the catch. And Northwestern takes game one of this doubleheader by a score of six to three.